All right, our third video in our probability unit here. So now this is where we're definitely going to ramp up. Um, I'm not going to say it's going to get difficult, but this is where it definitely starts getting a little bit thicker in the probability. So we're going to consider three separate events, okay? Three separate events. Event number one, let's just say in a standard deck of 52 cards, event one is getting a jack. So what's the probability of getting a jack? Well, if you don't know, there's four jacks that are in a deck of playing cards. There's the jack of diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades. So, you know, we would say that the probability of getting a jack would be four out of 52 cards. Now, at first glance, you might go, um, should we simplify that four out of 52? Should we say that's one thirteenth? You can if you want, but the very nice thing about fractions in stats class uh, will be you, you don't necessarily have to uh, simplify your fractions. And I would honestly prefer if you leave them not simplified. Because in this scenario, I know what the 4 means, and I know what the 52 means, right? I know there are 4 jacks out of 52 cards. Now, event 2, okay? Completely separate here. Event number 2, what's the probability of getting a red ace? And there's only 2 red aces in the entire deck. So there's a 2 out of 52 chance, which again can simplify to be 126th, but let's just leave it as 2 52nds, all right? And then I have a third event. What if I wanted to know what's the probability of getting a jack or a red ace? Jack or red ace. And then I would go, well, there's four jacks. Uh, and there's two red aces, so the probability that I would get any of these uh, overall, well, there would be six 50 seconds, right? There's four jacks, two red aces together, six 50 seconds. And so now I want you to kind of think about the connection that we just made with those three separate events. So a jack, we said was four 50 seconds, red ace was two 50 seconds, and getting a jack or a red ace was six 50 seconds. So if you looked at these bottom fractions down here, can you see maybe what you would do to these to be able to get this? And I, I think it's a pretty standard easy thing for you to kind of notice that, hey, yeah, if we add together these probabilities, well, that's the same thing as just either uh, event by themselves, right? So if I want a jack or a red ace, well, I could just look at the probability of a jack separately, and I could look at the probability of a red ace separately, and if I add those probabilities together, well, that will give me the probability of either event occurring. But now that we're going to try this again, but with slightly different events. So event one still probability of a jack, right? So what's the probability of getting a jack? It's still four fifty seconds. It's the second event that we're going to change here. Instead of a red ace, now we're going to say, what's the, or what's the probability that you get a spade? So spades, there are 13 spade cards all together out of 52, which again is one-fourth of the deck because there's four suits, but 13 50 seconds, if you will. Now, what's the probability that we get a jack or a spade? And so if you consider, we've got, uh, you know, we've got all these spades in here and we've got our jacks piled up, uh, but how many really cards are we talking about altogether? And at first glance, you might say 17, but there's not 17 cards here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There, there's 16 50 seconds. Well, that's kind of weird. So if we kind of consider what we looked at earlier when we had jacks, red aces, and jacks or red aces, earlier we said we could just add together the two individual events, and that would be equivalent to getting either or event. But in this scenario, it doesn't work out, right? If we want to know what the probability of a jack or a spade is, we simply can't just add together the individual events themselves. Right? We can't just split the or here and go, well, what's the probability of a jack? 4 50 seconds. What's the probability of a spade? 13 50 seconds. Oh, okay, so can we just add these together to get what a jack or a spade is? And no, we can't. So what's the difference? So there's a very small, subtle difference here in this example than there was in our previous example.
all right? So jack, we had 450 seconds. Spades, we had 1350 seconds. Um, but we got to consider what these two events have in common. And what do these two events have in common is they both have a jack of spades in common. Which means if you just add the 4 and the 1350 seconds, that means you've included the jack of spades twice. So how do we counterbalance double counting specific cards? So this represents a jack and it's a spade. It meets both criteria of these two separate events, right? And so what we're going to have to do is subtract away what we double counted. So notice again here, if I have jack of spades and I have jack of spades, well, I don't want to include the jack of spades twice, so if I subtract away the jack of spades one time, then subtracting this away is going to get rid of my double counted jack of spades. And it leaves me with just one. Does it really matter which event, uh, you know, is it jack or spades that get the jack of spades? In the end, it doesn't matter because we're looking at really kind of a collective event of getting jack, a jack or a spade. Okay. So now let's kind of put all this together here. So if we go back to our original example with the jack or the red ace, um, if we think about it, there is no jack that is also a red ace, right? We had four jacks and we had two red aces and they had nothing in common with each other, right? They, I mean, there wasn't a duplicate card like the jack of spades. So if we think of well, what was a jack and a red ace, we would say, well, there were no jacks that are red aces. So we don't have to subtract away anything, right? There is no double counted card. So we really did this. We added that together and we said, boom, 650 seconds. Um, but this may come into play for certain events, just like with the jack and the spades. So this is the general addition rule for probability. If you want to know the probability, of event A or B happening, event A or B, this is kind of, kind of considered one event here, A or B, then what we're going to do is we're going to add together the individual events, but we're also going to have to subtract away what those two events have in common. So remember, with the jacks and the red aces, there were no jack red aces, so we had nothing to subtract away. But in the jack spade case, there was a jack of spades, and it got counted twice. So we had to then address this part of our formula. Okay, so this is on the official AP Stats formula sheet, so this is something that you wouldn't normally have to memorize. It's already given to you. All right. Now, some extra vocabulary to talk about that double-countedness idea. So with our jack and our red aces, we said, hey, none of those cards met both criteria, right? There, you know, there are no red aces that are jacks. There are no jacks that are red aces. We would call those two events, jacks and red aces, we could call them one of two phrases. We could call them disjoint events, or we can call them mutually exclusive events. Now, in my experience teaching AP stats, typically the term mutually exclusive gets used more, um, but I wouldn't just necessarily throw disjoint out the window. All right, and in our examples of jacks and spades, where we did have a card that met both criteria of being a jack, but also being a spade, uh, and we would call those not disjoint or not mutually exclusive. So in a Venn diagram, that's where our two bubbles would overlap with each other. And we'll, we will definitely do a lot of uh, Venn diagrams with our probability stuff this chapter. So if your two events have something in common, Venn diagram, they overlap. And if they overlap, then they are not disjoint or not mutually exclusive. But if you have two events that have absolutely nothing in common with each other, then in a Venn diagram, those two bubbles are completely uh, separated from each other, and we would call those events disjoint or mutually exclusive. Now, going back to our general addition rule, that A and B part, if A and B, if events A and B are disjoint, then that value is just going to be zero. 
So that's like what we did with the jack and red aces. There was no jack and it was also a red ace. So it had zero probability to it. Uh, but in our jack and our spade example, there was a jack and a spade, aka the uh, jack of spades. And that's why we had to subtract away something here in that scenario. So sometimes you might have to subtract away something, and sometimes you might not have to subtract away something. It all hinges if events A and B, your two events, are disjoint or not disjoint. So now I'm going to show you some other ways uh, to get these probabilities, okay? So sometimes we're going to be dealing with uh, a two-way table, all right? And so in this two-way table, the row up here represents the, prob or represents the events jack. And we're either going to get a jack or we're not going to get a jack, okay? So if the first event, event A, is jack, we either get a jack or we don't get a jack. And from our previous video, we're going to use the complement uh, symbol here. So jack complement just means you don't get a jack. You get any other card, but it's not a jack. In the column here, this represents the event red ace. And either we get a red ace, or we don't get a red ace, or red ace complement. And so let me break down uh, what all of these numbers really mean here, okay? So first I'm gonna start with the, the purple values. And these represented our uh, marginal distributions. This goes all the way back to chapter one, when we talk about marginal distributions. And the marginal distributions are really like the subtotals, if you will. So overall, how many jacks are there? There are four jacks. How many cards are not jacks? There are 48 cards that are not jacks. So this is the marginal distribution of jacks, if you will. And then how many red aces do we have overall? There are two. How many cards are not red aces? There's 50 of them. So two and 50 represents the marginal distribution of red aces of that particular event. Now, everywhere where these things could intersect with each other, these are actual specific cards. So notice this zero here. What this is telling me is that there are zero cards that are jacks and their red aces. There is no red ace of jacks, right? There is no jack of red aces. That is a nonsensical card. But for this two right here, what we're saying is, is that there are two red aces that are not jacks. Okay, that kind of makes obvious sense there, right? There are two red aces, the ace of uh, diamonds and the ace of hearts, that are not jacks. Right, aces are not jacks. Cool. Now, this four means we have four jacks that are not red aces. And that should seem, hopefully, seem kind of obvious there. Jacks cannot be red aces. But now this 46, this 46 means we have 46 cards that are not jacks and they are not red aces. Okay, so again, we have 46 cards that are not jacks and also not red aces. So I'm going to show you how you could figure out the probability, and this is something that we already figured out here, right? This was 650 seconds. Uh, but I'm going to show you two different ways of using a two-way table to get this probability. And whatever way makes the most sense to you, then I want you to use that. All right? Now, I'm going to start down here with this bottom way. This is what we talked about previously, that getting a jack was 450 seconds, and that's me using this, the, using the marginal distributions. And getting a red ace, well, that was 250 seconds. And I'm going to subtract away the probability of getting a jack and a red ace well, that's specifically this number, where a jack and a red ace um, intersect in the two-way table. And we said, there's no such thing. And in the end, that was 650 seconds. Now, another way of figuring out jack or red ace is purely focusing on these numbers and not worrying about the marginal distributions. So jack or red ace, what I do is I look at each of these individual numbers that make up the main data of my, of my playing cards, if you will, okay? And so I need to ask myself, do any of these numbers represent jacks or red aces? 
So if I look at this zero, does this zero represent a jack or a red ace? And you might go, it actually represents both, but does it represent either one of these? And we would say, yeah, it does. So this would be counted in this probability. But since it's zero, it's not really like it's gonna make a difference. So then I look at the next number and I go, all right, well, the next number is, we'll, we'll use this two here. Does this two represent either a jack or a red ace? Well, it doesn't represent a jack, right? Because this is in the not jack column, but it does represent a red ace. So we do want to include this number in our final probability answer. And then let's go down here. What about this four? Does this four represent either a jack or a red ace? And in this case, it represents getting a jack. So we would include it in our final probability answer. And then last but not least, what about this 46? Does this 46 represent either getting a jack or getting a red ace? And this time it does not. This does not give us either a jack or a red ace. So we wouldn't include this number. So what we're gonna do with all of these three numbers that met these three is we're gonna add them all together, which is six still, and it's out of our total 52 down here. So sometimes people like to use just these numbers, and then other times people like to use the, the general addition rule. So whichever way makes more sense to you is completely fine with me. So we're gonna do the same example, but with that second scenario, okay? So first off, I'm gonna use the general addition rule, right? We said there's four 50 seconds that were jacks. We had, um, Spades, and let's see, how many total spades are there? There were 13 spades out of 52. Uh, but now I need to consider, are there any cards that I double counted in those four and those 13, in those 13 50 seconds? And there is, where jack intersects with spades. There is a jack of spades, right? We had to subtract away that card because we counted it twice. And there's our 16 50 seconds probability. And again, just leave it as 16, 50 seconds. Now, again, if you wanted to only consider these numbers, we can still get 16, 50 seconds. And again, you have to explore each individual number that's in here. So first off, this one. Does this one represent a jack or a spade? And you might go, hey, it actually is both of them, right? So it does count. It is a jack or a spade. What about this 12? Does this 12 represent a jack or a spade? And you might go, uh, it doesn't represent a jack because that's in the jack complement column. Uh, but you know what, it does count as a spade. So we will include this number. How about this three? Does this three, uh, is it a jack or a spade? And you might go, hey, yes, it does include a jack here. So we want to include that number. And what about this 36? Does this 36 represent a jack or a spade? And it doesn't represent a jack, and it doesn't represent a spade. So you know what? We're not going to use that 36 number. So out of these four numbers that rep really represent our entire deck of cards, we want the 1, we want the 3, and we want the 12, which adds up to be 16. Out of our total number of cards in our deck, 52. So this method really addresses the double counting because we already accounted for it really right here, right? So this one, we already kind of separated out uh, from all the cards that are jacks and not spades, from all the cards that are spades and not jacks, to then include the one card that actually includes both of those events. So again, if either one of those ways makes way more sense to you, the more power to you and use that method.